an enforcement decision we made against the New York Post. We blocked them from being spread. We admitted this action was wrong. We attached voting information to posts by candidates on both sides and additional contexts to posts trying to delegitimize the outcome. Twitter and Facebook CEOs in the hot seat over their handling of the election and the alleged Hunter Biden story. Here to react, member of the House Judiciary Committee, Congressman Greg Stubbe. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. So after this hearing, are we any closer to some form of government regulation of big tech? Well, I think you got them to admit to a lot of things that we already knew as an American people that were going on. It certainly wasn't a mistake that they censored the New York Post story. That was an intentional act that they made. But there's absolutely nothing that anybody can do about it right now because they have complete and utter liability protection. And so we have a bill in the House. I've sponsored a bill in the House that would create a private cause of action for individuals who feel like their First Amendment rights of free expression and free speech have been censored. And there's a number of different Americans just in my district that have reached out to me and with examples of being censored by either Facebook or Twitter. If you take that protection away, you would see very quickly their behavior change because now they would be liable for civil penalties and be liable for a civil action by the people who have been censored in violation of their First Amendment rights. Can I ask you a more generalized question? Do you think this amount of censorship that we've seen happening during the Trump administration will continue during a Biden administration? Oh, absolutely not. Just like what you see in the mainstream media when Biden goes and asks questions of uh, the media, it's all uh, softball questions from the mainstream media to Biden. He's not asking, they're, they're not asking him any questions about Hunter Biden or the things that he did in China or the things that he did in the Ukraine or the things that he did uh, across the country and made millions of dollars. Of course not. Um, so you, you'll see a change, but the problem is, is the behavior is not going to change as it relates to conservatives. Uh, and I think it's very important that people have a private cause of action uh, if they're being censored. And the only way that they're going to be uh, liable to the American people for what they're doing is, is if their liability protection is repealed by Congress. Yeah. You know, meantime, uh, we're learning that the State Department, State Department rather, is warning the incoming Biden administration of China's intent to be a world power. And uh, they wrote this saying... The Chinese Communist Party's resolute conduct and self-professed goals require the United States and other countries to revise assumptions and develop a new strategic doctrine and address the primacy and magnitude of the China challenge to secure freedom. America, America must refashion its foreign policy. Those are just you know, fancy words of saying China's hell-bent on replacing the United States as a world superpower. What would a President Biden do about this? Uh, probably absolutely nothing if you look at his past history and his uh, actions with the Chinese Communist Party. And they know now that if for some reason Trump isn't able to pull this out through the different lawsuits and the fraud that we've seen across the country, uh, now they can walk all over the United States because Biden's going to let them do that. With Trump in the White House, he, he cracked down on their uh, different trade deals. He cracked down all the things that were going on. I had a bill here in the House that would have cracked down on the importation of Chinese fruit that they're importing in the United States. So there's a lot of things that Republicans and the Trump administration did against China to bring back American workers and bring back American jobs and businesses here to American soil. You're not going to see that under a Biden administration, and they know it. I want to read you this quote from a progressive group that is blasting Biden's recently announced, um, some of his staffers anyway, and this reads, quote, he will risk quickly fracturing the hard-earned goodwill his team built. A Biden administration dominated by corporate-friendly insiders like Steve Reschetti and Cedric Richmond will not help the president-elect usher in the most progressive Democratic administration in generations. What is your reaction to that? Because, you know, we were talking about this earlier this morning, how, you know, a lot of Democrats argue there's no divide in their party. But, you know, messages like this clearly state there are two different opinions as to where this party should go and how it should be run. Well, and it's no shock that Joe Biden is running as far to the left as he possibly can to appease that that progressive base of his party. You're seeing it in the administration as as Biden's talking about making these appointments, but you're also seeing it in the House. I mean, if we get to the point where I think we're going to be at 212, 214, maybe even 216 Republican members in the House, and there's now six or seven members of the progressive squad, they're going to hold everything up in the House and go to Speaker Pelosi and say, look, if you don't put in these leftist progressive policies, we're not going to vote for your bills. And if the progressive wing of the Democratic Party doesn't vote for their bills on the floor, they're not going to be able to get anything passed. 
So I, I think you're, you're seeing now all of these uh, progressive policies and the far left of their party now leveraging their power that they've had in this election cycle. Yeah, and I know you're not really in the business of giving uh, Joe Biden advice, but um, is this the sort of criticism that he's going to face from his own party over the next few years? And, and if so, what should he do about it? Uh, if, if, in fact, he does succeed after these recounts and after these lawsuits, uh, he's going to have a real challenge on his hands, especially if for some reason we weren't able to hold on the Senate in uh, Georgia and it's a Democratic uh, Senate, a Democratic House and Biden in the White House. He's going to be pulled as far to the left as possible. And it's going to be uh, the progressives that are going to be dictating what's going on in the White House yeah. and what's going on in the House and the Senate. Right. And that's unfortunate for our country. Congressman Greg Subi, we always appreciate you waking up early with us. Have a good day. Yeah, great to see you anytime. You too. Okay.